Okay, so we have the last talk for tonight, and we have uh, our colleague from ICMT, George Lepcevic. I hope I got it almost right. Um, he's a researcher here. Uh, his main research topic is the human gait analysis, so be careful because he watches how you walk. Test, is it working? Yeah, okay. Um, thanks again for the kind introduction. Um, it is indeed true, I'm doing my research mainly on human gait analysis, but today I'm gonna talk about a different thing that could be applied in future to human gait analysis. Uh, so the main focus of the today's talk is, um, I should start at the beginning, sorry for that. I don't know how that happened, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll present the work on a novel self-learning explainability method that uh, I developed with colleagues, uh, Thomas Baumhauer and Matthias Zeppelzauer, which we called uh, Bounded Logic Attention. And I presented this work also at uh, um, All Things Attention Workshop at uh, NeurIPS last year. So today's machine learning models are highly intransparent. Uh, here's an example. On the left-hand side, we see an input image of a bird. And in the center, there is an um, image classifier based, for example, on a CNN. And in this case, um, it predicts the correct class. It's a cardinal. And this is already a great achievement, but uh, there is also a, uh, downside kind of, of, of using such complex models. We heard it also in some of the questions previously um, that we as humans cannot easily understand um, why the prediction was made by the model because the models are quite complex. And in this work, we contribute to making predictions of image classifiers explainable and uh, these models more trans um, transparent to the users. So the field of uh, explainable AI emerged in recent years and in this field, or this field provides methods that can explain the functioning of complex models and also their predictions. And the majority of work um, concentrated in, in this field is um, on post hoc explanations um, with methods like Lime, GradCam, LRP, uh, SHAP, for example. And um, yeah, these models, yeah, these model methods um, have, have kind of also an issue because one always has to question how faithful these models represent the model and the functioning of the model. And there are various, um, publications and studies that try to assess um, the limitations of such methods. Um, there are also other groups of explainability methods, but um, because I'm focusing today on self-learning, um, explainability methods, um, we'll, we'll see this as a second group here. Um, so these methods provide uh, two insights into the functioning, um, and that's by construction because they're integrated into the model. I'm not using kind of a, a wrapper and try, try to assess the functioning of the model. I'm integrating certain mechanisms into the model to assess the functioning. Um, and there's also a drawback uh, for this kind of approach um, because it is it cannot a priori be ruled out that these mechanisms uh, kind of negatively affect the performance of the model. And 
we developed here a method, a self-learning explainability method, and assessed also the impact on the performance. Okay, one such self-learning explainability method was our starting point. It was uh, the method learning to explain by Chen and colleagues. And uh, they introduced an approach based on two convolutional stacks. So the idea of the method is to learn a binary mask um, in a first um, explanation network and then used these masked inputs in a second neural network to do the, the classification task, for example. And uh, for the sampling, they used the uh, Gumball softmax trick that we're not using. And I will show um, how we improved on that. And uh, this method has uh, certain limitations. Uh, it is, first of all, computationally expensive because I have to do these two passes through a convolutional stack in the training phase, but also during inference. And uh, probably the main limitation is, is the size of the explanation. It's, it's of a fixed size. I can, for example, here uh, we have a size of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight patches, kind of. To overcome these limitations, we propose the method bounded logic detention. And the main idea in this uh, method is to learn explanation, uh, and ex explanations by bounding the logits in the activation map of the final convolutional layer. And uh, for this purpose, we also proposed a new um, function, a new activation function that we called beta activation function. You, can see it here. Um, it's yeah. The, the function operates um, in an inverse manner to the famous ReLU. So the ReLU is um, for the negative value, it would be zero, and it would be the value x for the positive ones. And here it's kind of inverted. And by that, we're kind of cutting the logits, the maximum logits, and that's uh, a novelty. So the, these, um, actually, based on this activation function, we, we can gain some advantages um, as our approach is much more efficient. We don't need these two stacks. We, uh, so one convolutional stack is sufficient. Um, and um, yeah, it lends itself also to transfer learning setups and postdoc explanation. And probably the most, uh, or the, the, the best advantage is that we have uh, explanations of variable size. So we do not specif specifically say, okay, we need eight patches and those eight patches are the explanations. Uh, the method itself uh, determines how much information is needed for the task and for the classification of this particular image. So based on this activation function, we design an explanation module um, that, yeah, we'll, we'll call it BLA module. And uh, it replaces this global average pooling layer that we have here. And this BLA model can be applied directly on top of this uh, final feature maps. And it reweights kind of individual regions in these um, maps uh, during this pooling operation. So it is a replacement for a global average pooling. Uh, in this figure, we can see the setup of the BLA model. So on the left hand side, you can see the stack and the final, the features are the, the final features of the convolutional stack or the last convolutional layer. And this BLA module is then on the right hand side. And you can see that um, we first use, uh, or we first compute a one times one convolution. And then we apply uh, the beta activation function to bound the logits. And then we use the global softmax activation here. And use these weights that we get there uh, to, to weight kind of the features in this uh, pooling operation. So 
this explanation module Q uh, should learn to assign more weight to features that are discriminative for a specific task. And uh, so to encourage kind of this behavior, we proposed also a thresholding of the weights. And um, here we specify in the paper a threshold um, which is equal to one over uh, the number of logits that we have. So the experiments that we performed um, were executed on three data sets, uh, cat versus dog data set from Kaggle, uh, then the Stanford dogs data set and the Caltech bird uh, data set. And you can see for all of all three data sets, you can see some examples and um, the explainability results or the explanations that we obtain uh, with uh, bounded logic attention modules. And um, you can also see here that we have uh, soft and hard attention uh, explanations. So the soft explanations are here on the top. They're used during the training because we have to stay kind of differentiable to, to apply backpropagation. Uh, but during inference, we can use the hard explanations. Okay, let's take a look at the performance because I said it's important to assess that as well. Um, let's start with L2X. Um, L2X achieved significantly worse um, results than the baseline model. Um, the baseline model is without explainability, so trained on the same data, uh, but without explainability, and um, it's visualized with these dashed lines that you can see in the subfigures. And if we uh, continue with our initial BLA uh, variant without the thresholding, uh, we can see that we achieved significantly better results compared to the L2X method. Uh, however, we're not still reaching kind of the baseline um, without explanation. And in our BLA variant with thresholding, uh, the results improved uh, even further. And for example, for the Caltech bird data set, the accuracy is no longer significantly different uh, than the baseline. And this is just an additional experiment that we did. Um, where we showed that uh, employing this uh, BLA with thresholding in a post hoc manner. So we trained only this uh, one times one, uh, one convolution kind of, um, does not decrease accuracy on average. However, the variance is uh, in, in the performance metrics increased quite a lot. Okay, uh, now let's uh, take a look at some um, uh, explainability results here uh, obtained with L2X and with our three or actually two variants of BLA and this setup, uh, this post hoc uh, setup. So we can see that L2X sometimes fails to use important features in the images. So the, the, right, uh, the, the, the red regions are highly important kind of. And we can see that uh, for some of, uh, of these figures, uh, I'll try this. Yeah. Okay, here, for example, um, there, there are highly relevant regions in the background, for example, or here there's only one uh, part of the dog that is kind of important and so on. And uh, with the BLA explanation, uh, we see that they use like more import or the regions uh, are, are kind of uh, essential features for the underlying tasks. And what we also see is that the three, um, three variants here are quite similar. So it's, it's consistent or the results are consistent over these three variants. Uh, we performed also a user study uh, with 62 volunteers and we investigated here how users assess the BLA explanations compared to Gratcom and L2X explanations. And additionally, we also propose a sanity check um, that can be applied to any new explainability method um, where uh, 
yeah, where the users compared BLA explanations to random explanations from the same distribution. Um, so now I would like to start a short interactive session. So uh, I would ask you to, to raise your hand depending on which method you prefer or for which method you think that the explanation is more reasonable. And there is option A always, option B. And um, let's start here. Who prefers option A? Who prefers option B? Okay. Um, option A is BLA, yeah. Um, let's try this. Who prefers, prefers option A? Who prefers option B? Perfect, okay. Um, okay, let's skip this. That's the same. Um, here's something interesting. So who prefers um, explanation A? Who prefers explanation B? The ones that used GradCam are maybe familiar with images like this. So um, a lot of artifacts as well sometimes. Um, and this is also something interesting um, where we, um, who prefers explanation A? Who prefers explanation B? Okay, who thinks it's similar? Okay. So here we can see an example how we can use BLA to perform this feature selection kind of and then apply GradCam to, um, to determine the specific regions kind of for, the, for this class. And um, so the final evaluation of the user study is um, that uh, over all three data sets, um, BLA explanations are strongly preferred by users over GradCam, which is in the first subfigure, over L2X, which is in the second subfigure, and uh, also the sanity check was passed easily, which is the third subfigure. And uh, to conclude, uh, we with BLA we propose a simple and effective self-learning explainability method that generates explanations of variable size. And we showed in our experiments that there is only a marginal effect on the classification performance. Um, furthermore, uh, we showed that the BLA model can either be trained with a network uh, or used in a transfer learning setup or even as a post hoc method. And um, it is fully differentiable approach because uh, we don't have to use the Gumball softmax tricks that the colleagues had to use. And finally, we want to point out that BLA can be understood as a generic um, feature selector that can be applicable for feature selection problems. Thank you very much. And you can find the implementation of the bounded logic attention method on our GitHub repository. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. Maybe just one short question. Okay, if not, then thank you very, very much for this interesting talk. Um, so that was uh, this session for today. Thank you very much for coming. And I hope to see many of you next year at the next Saint. Um, now it's the networking part, so enjoy, meet a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, uh, try to um, finish your, uh, your um, signatures. So uh, maybe could we tell, uh, think this is some kind of self-supervised learning, maybe? <laughs> For those of you who don't have the signature yet, uh, and at 10 o'clock there will be the um, award for um, the competition. So thank you very much and enjoy your evening. <laughs>